Howdy y'all, my name is Josh. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Today, another thing I wanna talk about is yet again something I absolutely love and it's going to be denim. Denim, specifically Levi's denim, Levi's vintage denim, which has been extremely popular over the course of the past couple of years. In the vintage circles, finding vintage Levi's is definitely never a bad thing. And honestly, if you find them old enough, they can definitely garner hundreds of dollars. But the rarity of those are extremely high. Moving on from that though, I'm going to be showing you three different models that Levi's produces and has been producing. And I'm going to talk about one that I don't personally have on hand. I'll talk about how they fit, what to look for when you're looking at vintage Levi's, and then, yeah, probably some on body shots if I can. But first up, Levi's bread and butter. The very first thing that Levi's ever produced. No, that's actually a lie. No, that, that actually is very much a lie. Anyways. Previously called Levi's Waist Overalls, now called just Levi's, Levi's 501 Denim. Levi's 501s, my definite, like one of my favorite pair, pairs, pairs, pair, why am I saying this wrong? One of my favorite pairs of pants, I absolutely love this pair of Levi's 501s. Just as a preface before I go into fit and everything else, I personally am a dude who is basically on no extreme end of the spectrum. I'm not outrageously tall, I'm not outrageously short, I am not outrageously skinny, I'm not outrageously large. I'm a good, solid, medium build, mesomorph. Um, I am about 5'9 and 185 pounds. These jeans, well, fur jeans most, most of the time. I go for a 32 inch inseam, that's my true size, as well as a 30 inch, did I say 32 inch inseam? Yeah, I was wrong. I go for a 32 inch waist and then a 30 inch inseam. But for my vintage Levi's, more often than not, they've, been, they've gone through so many washes, gone through and seen so many things, probably more than I've seen in my lifetime. And I go for a 33-30 for the most part, unless I try it on and it fits well. I find that I can sometimes push a 34, but I guess the rule of thumb for me personally is basically take my regular waist size 32 and go one up, maybe two up if I wanted to push it or if I want it to be a truly baggy jean, I might go to a 34, 30. But 30 inch inseam is usually the sweet spot for me. My legs aren't very long. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so, I don't know. But the Levi's 501, super, super good pair of jeans. If you find them at Thrift, definitely something worth buying if they fit you well. I'm not gonna be talking about pricing as far as what people sell them at because it's kind of all over the place depending on the characteristics of it. And if it has a good wash, if it's in good condition, the distressing, the possible stains on them. But this one is just going to be a simple pair of black Levi's 501s. I tend to I tend to like black jeans a little bit more than I, I like indigo, which I guess for some denim heads is a little blasphemous. But the Levi's 501, I find that they fit me a little bit, a little tight in the thigh, and then a straight leg from the knee down. Definitely a really good look. The rise is slightly high, not that extreme. In more modern pairs of Levi's 501s, I find that their rises are a little bit lower than the vintage pairs. So this pair is from 1996, if I'm not mistaken. This was made in the USA, and when you're looking for vintage Levi's, looking at where they're made is definitely, definitely a really good thing to do. Usually the ones that are made in the USA and are in the 90s or before probably garner more money, definitely garner more money than the ones that are a little bit more modern and aren't made in the USA. But this one I got for, I don't know, around $8 at my thrift. Uh, definitely something that I've kept in my rotation for at least two years now. Yeah. And these, all of these ones that I'm going to be showing you today are made of 100% cotton. I prefer 100% cotton just because I find it more durable. Uh, it tends to last quite a bit longer. 
at first, if they're really stiff, they can be really uncomfortable, but I mean, in time, they do loosen up and conform to your body in ways that you use your legs most. So they basically just warm up to you. I find that jeans that have uh, a percentage of anything else, whether it be elastine, polyurethane, uh, or anything else, spandex maybe, I find that those are best for skinny jeans just because they mold a lot better to your body. Like they actually take the shape of your body as opposed to warm up to your body. A little bit of a nitpicky thing, please excuse the landscapers in the background. 100% cotton. <laughs> anyway, Levi's 501s, can't go wrong. One of their first models, definitely one of their most popular models and most common that I find at the thrift. Another one that's extremely common to come across and one that I actually very much love are the Levi's 505s. The 505s are a pair of jeans that at least right now are my go-to. I'm a big fan of straight leg pants and I am a big fan of when pants are basically just like roomy throughout the entire pant, not to the point where they're actually like loose loose, but the Levi's 505 I think is my sweet spot. This one actually isn't very old. This one is from the early 2000s if I'm not mistaken. I got these ones off of eBay for I think $13, but the details on them, the distressing and everything is absolutely beautiful. The Levi's 505s, again, in a 3330, tend to fit me a little bit roomier in the thighs and completely straight throughout the leg, which is my favorite part. It tends to pull over shoes, sneakers, boots, or whatever in such a flattering way. And hopefully you'll be able to see that in the on-body videos that I'll be adding into this one. But just to show you a little bit of detail on it, Levi's 505, it does have a little bit of distressing here and there. It definitely has some stains, which I actually think are really cool. Yes, I do wash my jeans, even if they're vintage. But I washed these when I got them. Got a couple of red paint splatters all over the legs, got some distressing around the knee, but probably the most surprising part, which I have the most issue with, is that whenever I buy distressed jeans, they usually, the, the knee distressing is usually like way off center from where my knee actually is, or basically like the person's leg were either longer or shorter than it should have been. Or, well, not maybe should have been, but the other person who, the previous owner of this pair of jeans had legs that were longer or shorter than me. But this one is actually perfect. It's right on top of my knee. Definitely, definitely one of my favorite pairs of jeans. Next up, I have the Levi's 517. The 517 is a little bit more daring, a little bit more fashion forward I mean not really but it doesn't look like a regular pair of jeans this one is a little bit more gimmicky this has a little bit of a flare at the bottom of it the 517 is known for being a boot cut and with the like if someone were to wear boots with a larger shaft of the boot then the boot the flare will basically cover that portion and very very nicely pull over the shoe i don't know how to describe it hopefully in the on body photos i'll be able to show you the 517 with a pair of shoes that i think it looks best with but the 517 is one that to be honest with you just because of the flare it's it's a somewhat intense for me i prefer a straight leg but from time to time when i'm feeling a little bit daring I'll pull out the 517s. What I wanted to show you guys about this one is this is another one that's made in the USA, but not only is it made in the USA, but it is also a Levi's orange tab denim. So these Levi's orange tabs, I find honestly pretty frequently at the thrift as well. Uh, if you're looking for Levi's to sell, orange tabs usually do sell for a little bit more than red tabs do. but. This one I actually have in a 3633. Way big, way long. I definitely cut it so that it would have a raw hem at the bottom, but I think it actually is fitting for a flare. I think a flare looks really good with the added detail with the flaring at the bottom. And the waist size for Levi's 517s is very strange. 
a lot of times they will fit they will fit significantly smaller than their actual like measurement but i do i do tend to feel that the 517 does have a little bit of a higher rise definitely a higher rise i would say a little bit skinnier throughout the top of the thigh and then as it goes to the bottom from the knee down it flares out so if you're looking for a solid pair of flare jeans the 517 is definitely one that you should look for plenty of them on ebay plenty of them on depop grailed and everything I absolutely love Vintage Levi's and finding Vintage Levi's is relatively easy because so many people own Levi's and they give them up so readily. And so long as you know what you're looking for, you can definitely find a pair that's worthwhile for you to either wear yourself or potentially sell. I would very highly suggest looking at other, like going to eBay and looking for other sold listings to get a good gauge of what you should price yours at. but for the purposes of wearing the 501s skinnier not skinnier i shouldn't say skinny but a little bit a little bit tighter in the top of the thigh straight from the knee down straight leg from the knee down 505 straight leg, straight leg throughout the entire thing pretty relaxed and my favorite at the moment and then the 517s is your quintessential flare jean. I definitely see a lot more women gravitating towards a 517. Usually men don't really care too much for the 517 because of that flare. It's not something that they're used to. But I mean, hey, if you like it, experiment. Feel, feel comfortable with something that you're going to be putting on your body. And honestly, you may think it looks kind of bad, but if you finesse it in the right way, it probably doesn't. I know a lot of people will put something on their body that may be something that's a little bit more adventurous than they're used to, but honestly, try it. You might find something that you like and you might find something that's like a little bit more, a little bit more you. Next up, I wanna show you the actual tags of the jeans itself, just to kind of get you a good feel for how the vintage Levi's tend to look. Since I have a good couple of jeans to show you guys, this one is going to be the back tag of the 501 you can see that the font of the 501 itself is definitely something that is a little bit different than modern levi's which is kind of indicative of the 90s i'll show you the inner tag as well this tag right here that is definitely going to be denoting that it is from the 90s as well For the 505s, like I said earlier, this is an early 2000s pair, so the tags are going to be very different. I'm sure you guys have seen this plenty of plenty of times. The inside tags are printed, it has the Levi's website on it. Nothing too crazy, but definitely something that I love. Painted jeans have been such a big thing recently, and me getting these for $13 was honestly a steal so don't sleep on ebay ebay is fire when it comes to finding old jeans here we go again with the levi's orange tab notice that there is obviously an orange tab and the back patch is in a brown as opposed to the red and then here's another fairly common fairly common tag that you see with a lot of 90s levi's earlier than that on the back it has some numbers of which that you can actually kind of estimate when they're from but yeah you guys thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate every single one of you who takes at least a little bit of time out of your day even if just a couple of minutes to hear me rant about something i absolutely love and if you guys have any questions feel free to put in the comments below if you guys want to chat comments please and like the video if you feel so inclined. If this was helpful to you at all, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm joking. If it was helpful, thank God it was. But if you guys have any questions, need anything, feel free to put it in the comments. Subscribe if you feel so inclined. And until the next video, later y'all.